Hello, my name is Tony Berard, and I've invented a number of board games. Uh, the board game that we're going to talk about in this video is called Go 12. Um, it is a new board game that can be played on the same Go set, or on the same set of playing pieces as a Go set. Go is an Asian game. Go is much older than chess. Go was invented approximately 5,000 years ago. So it's a really, really ancient game. And I don't know if anybody has uh, created any variants on Go. I do know that there are a whole boatload of chess variants. So there's, you know, a lot of people have tried to come up with new and improved uh, games for chess. Uh, but I don't know if anybody's done that for Go. Uh, there is something called Gomuku, which is five in a row. Uh, you just try to get five in a row. Each person places a thing. But that game is not fair. The, first, the person to place first, you know, has an advantage because they have one piece down and the other player puts a piece down to catch up. So usually that's a win for the person that goes first. Um, so, and Go is also unbalanced. It's, it's an unfair game. Uh, they usually give um, a few extra pieces or something at the end to try to balance the game and it balances out pretty well I guess but you have this thing it's called Qui or something so anyway this uh, this new game Go 12 it's it's much faster paced than Go and it uh, uh, I think it's funner and certainly less plotting tedious you know it's less tedious it's well, it's a lot more exciting so let's let's check it out. Uh, on the uh, Game Crafter website here, www.gamecrafter.com, that's where you can get this set. This is the box that it comes in. You can see Go 12, the board game invented by Tony Berard. This looks like a Go board because it is a Go board. Um, they decided not to use the letter I. And it took me forever to figure out what the problem was because it goes to T. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I decided to put the I in there and it goes from 1 to 19. They'll use 1 to 19, but they don't use the letter I. So that's one key difference. <laughs> this is the letter I. Uh, it's crazy. Why they thought, because it looks like a 1, I guess, but... The way the notation works, because of its position, it can't be a 1. It's an I, so I boldly made the choice to put the I back in there. All right. Uh, eventually, we're going to be hosting this game on this website, www.tinesandbarbs.com. All right. When you order this game from thegamecrafter.com, you could put in a search for Go or Go 12, and you'll find the game and you can order it then. Uh, you'll get this box and in the box uh, you'll get this board. This board here and I guess uh, got lighting issues here. I don't have a high-tech crew working for me so this is what it is. So and, and it's the same board on both sides so it'll last quite a while. If this side ever gets a little worn or whatever just use the other side. So you get plenty of mileage out of this board. All right, and you get 181 of these white cubes and 180 of these black cubes. Oops, how about this one? 180 of these. Uh, the board is 19 by 19, and you get these sites. This site is labeled A1 because it's on the A file and the first rank, so A1. This one here in the middle would be J10. So that's J10. Uh, these, these little extra wide dots on the board, the Go board, are there for a reason in Go. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember why. I think it helps uh, players judge the distance to the corners and how far it is to the center. It's important for strategic purposes and go. I just decided to leave them in there. 
they're not hurting anything. All right, so white's first turn, white can place two pieces on this board. These are called stones. I've kept the name stones, but since I made them into cubes instead of round discs, uh, you can call them cubes also. So let's say white does that. So that would mean white played h1, comma, or not h1, h8, comma, k8. And that would be white's turn. On any given turn, you have the option of moving a piece up, down, left, or right, one unit. You can do that to two pieces or the same piece, or not move at all. It's an option. So you can move zero, one, or two pieces, one space. All right, usually when we're playing, I was playing with a friend of mine named Oliver, we would set four pieces off to the side like that, so that way you would knew you would know when your turn is done. So let's say black plays uh, here, 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 and here. And so with those four placements, uh, let's say black also moved one like that. Which, of course, why couldn't Black have placed it there to begin with? Well, as the turns go on, you'll see that um, it, you might change your mind a lot. Because this is a very complex game, just like Go is, except it's much more fast-paced. Because you get to put four down every single turn. And so, uh, the oh, i got to talk about what a 12 is. So I'll, I'll talk about a 12 on the board box. So we'll just put this right over top of the other one. So the board is actually underneath the box lid now. Um, a 12 is, uh, you can get a, a one in a row. Let's see, let me get some white ones here. So the idea is to get a 12. So you want it to be 12 in a row, like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Two more. 11, 12. So this is a 12. Um, this would be a vertical 12. You can also have a 12 diagonally or horizontally. So that would be a 1 by 12. 1 by 12. And so um, you can also make a 12 as a 2 by 6. The game Gomoku that I just talked about, 5 in a row. 5 is prime. And so you can't uh, have anything other than 1 times 5. But 12 is not prime. I chose 12 because it has three factorizations. Or three ways of writing it as a factor of two numbers. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, as this depicts, or 3 times 4. And 2 by 6 can be horizontal or vertical. And the 3 by 4 also can be horizontal or vertical, not diagonal. So the multi-layer ones can only be horizontal or vertical. The 1 by 12 also can be diagonal. So this would be a horizontal orientation of the 3 by 4. All right, so let me pick the box back up. So that's what a 12 is. And the idea is to form a 12 on the board. So Black observed that uh, Black has 3 along this single file. So that's Black is building a threat. White also is building a threat. So let's say white places four. I like to do a lot of these um, little two by twos. They they are building blocks to bigger things. So like say white does that. So then uh, black might now do something like this again, setting them off to the side. 
you know, then uh, let's say black places here, 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 and here. Let's say black brings this closer to white's encampment like that. So there's the game so far. So now it's white's turn. So let's set white up as his little four two by two thing. Um, and each of these can be notated. So let's say white does that. That would be, you know, stopping any chances that black has of making a 12 in a row. Because now uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is uh, capped off on the ends by white. So black has to do something else. If white later on moves one of these, maybe black can form something, but you know, that would be a mistake by uh, white. Let's say white finishes the turn by doing something like that. Now it's black's turn. And all these would be notated, you know, like these last two would be M7, comma, M8. And so uh, the uh, this game has a notation to be able to record all the events that occur on it. All right, and so the game continues on as it does. All right, I'm going to say one or two other things, and that will conclude this video. I'm just showing how to play the game of Go 12. The idea is to form a threat. In uh, chess, you make threats. In this game, you also make threats. It's a game, but really it's a, it's a contest. They should call them contests and not games. So let's say white had this going on, and maybe black had stuff going on over here. This is a threat if white had formed this because there's eight here. And so uh, there's the threat of making a three by four here, a three by four here, a two by six here, and a two by six here, or a two by six here and here. So that needs to be uh, parried. So that's four threats here that white has. So black can do this, 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 and this. Now let's say uh, black had a piece here. He could just place three and do a move here, and that would free his fourth placement to continue on with whatever he had going on up here, let's say. And so this blocks everything that white had going on. But that was very obvious. Um, you might have something like this in the game, where this is just as much of a threat. Because if white moves one there and moves the second one there, that forms this, and then black can make the four placements to make eight. So the idea is to form enough of these threats to where it cannot be parried. And so that would be an unstoppable multi-threat. So one can make multi-threats or unstoppable multi-threats. And so that's, uh, that, that gets into some depths of the game. And so that's, uh, that basically concludes what I would like to say about, well, I'll say one more thing. Because this game is more complex uh, than chess, uh, this game is really a step up from chess. And fighting checkers, I talked about that in another video, fighting checkers. This game, you know, can also be gotten on the Game Crafter site. This is played on a 10 by 10 and you get 40 checkers per side. That game is uh, uh, just a little bit more complex than chess. But this is vastly more complex than chess. So uh, there'll be a great deal of richness with this game. All right. That concludes this video. This is Tony Berard signing off.